Ipswich have secured back-to-back -back promotions, wowing fans and media along the way with some fantastic football. But now they've got back to the top table of English football, whilst Kieran McKenna may have signed a new contract in real life in this EAFC alternate universe, he's been wooed by some of the country's biggest clubs, leaving Ipswich managerless. And so I've been drafted in to steady the ship, retain the club status in the Premier League, and maybe win a trophy along the way. But my first job as Ipswich manager is to introduce myself to the world's press, and of course take some of your comments. You should stick with the 4-2-3-1 wide that they already have and play a wing play tactic to utilise the quick wingers and physical striker. I would also try and sign Amari Hutchinson and Jeremy Sarmiento on a permanent deal to try and give them as much game time as possible to help their development. For signings, you could look at Ben Sheaf as an upgrade in the central defensive midfield position. Also, Ipswich don't really have an out-and-out -out right back, so you could keep Tanzabi as a centre-back and look to sign a young, pacey right back such as Nathan Patterson or Pedro Malero. Yes, yeah, so my first act on this brand new Ipswich career mode was to take the three newly promoted teams back up to the Premier League to try and fit in where they belong. However, as you can see from the state of the starting eleven, it's going to take an absolute miracle for us to stay there. I don't have a single player in my starting eleven rated even 75, let alone in the 80s. And a goalkeeper whom, whilst he may have played several times in the Championship for Ipswich last season, at 69 rated, he's going to get absolutely battered in the Premier League if I retain him in between the sticks. And so I totally agree with you. Looking at the state of this overall squad, I certainly don't think we have the technical capabilities to play a tiki-taka possession-based style. I certainly don't think we have the physical capabilities to play a high press Gagan pressing style so I certainly think a wing play tactic getting a lot of width and throwing balls into the big man up front will suit this team down to the ground. Nathan Broadhead was one of Ipswich's best players last season in the Champions League chipping in with 13 goals and with him being 72 rated and having fantastic pace I certainly think he can offer us something this season and with Amari Hutchinson on the other side of my midfield lighting up the championship as well last season with 10 goals and 5 assists yes he might only be 68 rated but I think with him just being 19 years of age he deserves the opportunity to show what he can do in the Premier League this season as well. Plus, with me having a six foot five striker leading the line for me this season in Kiefer Moore, I think this wing play tactic throwing balls into the box for this big man is our best route to success this season. For me, though, the most important cog in the wheel is going to be this man, Connor Chaplin. He's got that something special, and at 74 rated, is my highest rated player in the squad. As you can see from his stats last season, with him chipping in with 13 goals and eight assists in the championship, he is going to be absolutely pivotal to our survival hopes this season as well. So I'm going to get him on a training plan that will hopefully get the best out of the 26 year old and hopefully get the best out of the rest of this squad. Maybe sign some marquee but low key signings. Being a newly promoted Prem side means you've got to make an impression. Maybe sign some players from teams still in the championship like Gabriel Sara or Jonathan Rowe. All MLS talents like Tyler's Magno or Cucho Hernandez. Now after being promoted to the Premier League this season, the board have given me a budget of £55 million to spend and whilst initially it might sound like a decent amount of money, judging by the level of my starting 11 and the state of my substitutes and my overall squad I do worry is it going to be enough to try and keep this team in the Premier League so with that in mind I think looking at players who potentially are playing at a lower level maybe in the championship or at lower divisions elsewhere I think is a really good idea to hopefully put us in a decent position so that if we do get relegated this season we are in a position to try and bounce back with immediate effect now I mentioned at the beginning of the episode a goalkeeper is probably going to be my number one priority with that arguably being the weakest part of my team only having a 69 rate player in between the sticks and with another 69 rated player in Burgess partnering Wolfenden at the back I think I'm going to take the advice from earlier about where I'm going to position this man Axel Tunzebi yes he has the ability to play at centre back and on the right hand side of my defence he is currently rated at 73 which would make him my highest rated central defender at the club so with that in mind he will move over to the centre of the park to partner Wolfenden at the back but it does mean that it's going to leave a gaping hole on the right hand side of my defence with young Clark being the only man who can play there at the moment and realistically with him being 68 rated I'm certainly going to need an improvement in that area of the pitch as well. Fortunately enough though it seems like I don't have the same such problems on the other side of my defence on the left hand side with Leif Davis being 74 rated and Brandon Williams in reserve at 72 it looks like those two are going to be fighting all season for a starting spot on the left hand side of my defence. Now with my captain Sam Morsey being 74 rated and once again being one of the best players in the team and seemingly forming a good partnership in the middle of the park with this man Massimo Longo plus with me having the on loan Lewis Travis in reserve, I'd say I'm also kind of comfortable with the options that I've got in the centre of the park at the moment. I mentioned before that Nathan Broadhead was an influential figure in the championship last season and he deserves the opportunity to show what he can do ahead of the new Premier League season. As well as having the youngster Jeremy Sarmiento on loan from Brighton, I think I'm going to be well stocked in that part of the pitch as well. Now obviously I've got Amari Hutchinson and also Wes Burns who are going to be battling it out on the right hand side of my midfield. And whilst I mentioned Connor Chaplin's going to be pivotal to our Premier League chances this season with him realistically being 
being the only decent central attacking midfielder I've got at the team. If anything happens to this young man, I might want to consider bringing in a replacement for him. If I want to stay in the division, though, goals are going to be absolutely vital. They're going to be a lifeline to this team. And so that means Kiefer Moore is going to be the man that I'm going to be relying on. He's only got a 24-70 rated George Hurst in reserve to try and compete with him. But the big question is, are these two going to be enough to get enough goals for me this season? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. So I think for now, overall, looking at this team, there are two key areas that I need to improve right away. Of course, that is this man in goal in between the sticks. And, of course, this man Clark on the right-hand side of my defence. But before I do that, in a bid to try and raise some additional transfer funds, it is time to look at some outgoing transfers first. And with me starting to clear out some dead wood, beginning with a £610 million transfer for Caden Jackson to Swansea, as well as a £1 million deal for backup goalkeeper Christian Walton to Heidenhelm, plus a 260 k deal for the veteran Sonny Aluko to Plymouth, it's finally time to get down to business to try and improve this Ipswich team. And, of course, as I mentioned, goalkeeper is my number one priority. That is the position we're going to be starting. Now firstly I must say thank you so much for all of the different options that you have provided me. This shortlist is never ending because of so many players that you've all suggested and I really do appreciate your comments, your feedback and everything else. So please keep them coming. It does make a huge difference to the quality of this career mode. Now there were a few names on here that really stood out to me. The likes of the backup Liverpool goalkeeper Kelleher, the likes of up and coming goalkeeper as Sunderland Anthony Patterson and the now heartbroken Ilian Melia after being knocked out of the championship playoff final. But there was the signing of one man that was too good of an opportunity for me to turn down. He's a man who started to make a name for himself over in Croatia and has managed to sneak his way into the Croatian national side ahead of Euro 2024. That is right, I have been able to snap up a young 24-year-old who I believe has the absolute world at his feet. A young man who is now a free agent on this game and is ready to try and see if he can play his trade in the Premier League for the first time in his career. As Ipswich Town welcome our first signing of the summer, Nadjilko Labrovic on a free transfer. And at 75 rated, he immediately he comes in and asserts himself as our number one goalkeeper in between the sticks and also come in and assert himself not just as our number one but as arguably the best player in the entire team. What a statement signing we're making at the beginning of this Premier League campaign. However with Axelton's AB moving over to centre back to partner this man Luke Wolfenden ahead of the new season I don't think the now transfer listed Yanai Donasian nor the young 22 year old Harry Clark are going to be good enough to cement themselves as my number one right back this season. So once again we are turning our attention to another young and up and coming player in European football and another young player who has been heavily recommended by you. And finally, ready once again to make the next step in his career and try and ply his trade over in English football, more specifically in the Premier League. That is right, we are saying hello to Petro Malero from Boa Vista for £7.5 million. Once again at 73 rated, he's a significant step up on what I already have at the club. He's got pace to burn and hopefully, with him just being 22 years of age, he's got his best years ahead of him. Let's get him on a decent training and development plan that will get the best out of the young man. And let's get him straight into my starting eleven to make an immediate improvement to this overall Ipswich team. And so with two new signings down and still having a whopping £47 million in the transfer budget, I want to get a much closer look at to what some of these players have to offer us ahead of the new season. And so that is why in our very first game of pre-season under the lights away in Spain, it's time to show what these players can do. And with new signing Malero already driving down that right-hand side and delivering fantastic crosses into the box. And with the other new signing Labrovic making some extraordinary saves, I'm quietly confident about what we can do ahead of the new season. And so after making a couple of changes to my tactical setup encouraging all of my players to make as many forward runs as possible and to pile as many people into the box. It is finally time to see, after almost two decades of waiting, what Ipswich Town can bring back in the Premier League, as we're going to be facing off at home in our very first game against Crystal Palace. This is going to be my starting 11 for our very first game back in the top flight with our two new signings making their debuts. Labrovic in goal, Malero at right back, Wolfenden and Sunzabi in the centre with Davis on the left hand side, Longo and Morsey in midfield, Hutchinson on the right, Chaplin in behind the striker, Broadhead on the left hand side with Keeper Moore leading the line up front. Here we go then, a big game under the lights and a big test here to really see where we are at and whether or not these players are are capable of keeping Ipswich Town in the Premier League. But at the moment, it looks like Kuyame was trying to storm past one of my centre-backs who has now given a free kick away in a very dangerous position. And of course, an even more dangerous man in Eze is going to step up to take here. He's within shooting distance. Is he going to take the shot on? It looks like he's lining it up. He does, and he balloons it over the bar. So Malero with his first touch in an Ipswich shirt in a competitive game here, and he almost runs himself into a little bit of trouble. He does. My word, he's got to be a bit sharper than that here in the Premier League. Hutchinson. 
Nice ball into Kiefer Moore in the centre and Kiefer's come deep here and he's played in. Connor Chaplin really nicely done. Back into Morsey, my captain, to take the shot on straight at the goalkeeper. Really good start though. And Zabi under a bit of pressure but finds a nice ball out to Malero on the right hand side. The uh, young man gives it away though. It's not been a really positive start for the young right back here in his first Premier League game as Kiyame now tries to bring it past Wolfenden and does it with ease. And now the young man's going to stretch his legs into the box here. Wolfenden frantically trying to come back. That is brilliant recovery defending. Hutchinson now to bring it away down the right hand side. Plays in Morley in the centre. Chaplin's picked up a really nice pocket of space. Plays it out to Longo now who loses it to Richards. Too slow on the ball. And once again Crystal Palace can try and see if they can hit us on the counter attack. It's back into Wharton now as they just try and see if they can regain control and possession. Lovely ball into Kiyame, who's causing me a lot of problems so far here today. He, I'm trying to see if I can put a challenge in, but he's just too slippery. And in the end, he floats it all the way back to Wharton, but they keep it alive. Back in the box, as a lovely turn into Franca. Big save from the goalkeeper. That's exactly what he needs to keep his confidence up, and that's exactly what my defence needs to know, that they've got a huge figure in between the sticks for me, as Eze just manages to knock the ball past Malero, who has really struggled so far in this game. Kiyame once again takes it on with his left. Another big save. Well, is the goalkeeper already inside the opening half half an hour here improving to be an inspired signing here as he's keeping us in the game Malero though with his first big challenge of the game and hopefully that will give him the confidence to continue and try and see if he can improve his level of performance as he's managed to drive past a couple of different players and once again just runs out of a few options here and runs into trouble and now Crystal Palace can bring this one away with Wharton over to the right hand side to Munoz the right back now he's going to try and see if he can go past Davis he does manage to go past him Eze of course the danger man for Palace once again wriggles away from the challenge into Kiyame Kiyame into Franca, Franca, oh he just struck it straight at the goalkeeper and after two wonderful saves he's gone and had an absolute howler and Crystal Palace take the lead. Well he celebrates in front of the camera and Crystal Palace have given us a sharp warning here that the Premier League is a level up from the championship. They just ghosted into my box here and you could argue there was too much power on the shot but could the goalkeeper have made himself look bigger and stronger and could he have kept that one out? I would argue he could. It's really poor from Laveric and it's a really poor start to this game. It's 1-0 Palace. Valero under pressure again. Palace have sensed a chink in the armour here as we try and see if we can release uh, Hutchinson down this right-hand side. Connor Chaplin, the main man for us. As I said, the man who's going to be pivotal to any hopes we have this season has been kept under wraps so far by the Crystal Palace defence. But once again, he's found a really nice little pocket of space, swivelling around here, trying to find an option. He does manage to find an option into Morsey. Morsey takes on the strike, strikes it straight at the goalkeeper but yet again right on the stroke of our time. So it's been a difficult first half to say the least. We've really struggled to carve out any decent opportunities. Morsey has been the man who's had the two of them but he's hit them straight at the goalkeeper and at the moment it stands 1-0 Crystal Palace. Mitchell, nice ball into SA who's picked up a really nice pocket of space here right in the centre but Wolfenden has come across the challenge. Really good defending from the young man. Longo now into Hutchinson. Surely the young Chelsea man can stretch his legs here and try and see if he can drive down this right hand side but he hasn't got the pace to get away from a couple of the Crystal Palace defenders. Morsey though into Chaplin who's just straight offside. So right on the hour mark I'm going to make a couple of substitutions. Both Hurst and Burns are going to come on here to try and see if they can give us a little bit bit more pace in the attack. Morsey now out to Broadhead who's been relatively quiet so far in this game but lays a lovely overlapping pass into the overlapping run of Davis the left back who's now going to try and see if he can get past a couple of challenges. He's got past one. He's into the box. Davis with a brilliant strike and a brilliant save from Henderson. Well the left back surging through the heart of the Crystal Palace midfield and arguably that has been the best chance of the game so far and it's going to be that man to throw it back into the box looking for Broadhead. It falls to Wolfenden and the big man at the back has come up trumps and he scored the first Premier League goal for Ipswich this campaign. Well, I've said my tactics this season are going to be to try and throw the ball into the box for the big men. And my word, it has come up trumps here today. Wolfenden just managed to ghost into the centre of the six-yard box, unmarked. And when that big man has that time and space, that is a towering header into the back of the net to lift the spirit here at Ipswich. It's 1-1. It's St. Xavier now into Longo. We've really got our tails up here as we make our way into the Crystal Palace half here. Hurst on as a substitute. Finds a nice ball into Connor Chaplin, I was going to say. But it was intercepted well. But that is much better attacking here from Ipswich Town as we look to try and see if we can get the winner here and get our first three points here in our Premier League campaign. But Crystal Palace are the team now that are stretching forward with Munoz on the right-hand side. I tried to come across the challenge. Wharton, though, into Decore, into Elise, the danger man, into another danger man in Eze. This time it's Tunzebi with a huge block here. Elise with a lovely flick over. And it's Wolfenden who just about gets in the way, but Decore drags it wide. That was a huge opportunity and he knows it. So Malero's to try and bring this one out of defence. Five minutes remaining on the 
clock here for one of these two teams to find their way into getting three points here as it's now looking like it's going to be Crystal Palace that are going to be the team to do it but Wolfenden who has arguably been man of the match so far today with a huge crunching challenge exactly when I needed one and that is a horrendous challenge on Burns there the referee issues a yellow card to Jefferson Lerma and he's going to be that man Burns to pick it up once again as we drive into the Crystal Palace half here Hurst picks it up tries to play it around the corner into Connor Chaplin doesn't manage to reach him Decore to try and bring this one out the referee looks at his watch here deep into stoppage time Lerma back into Decore as the referee blows for full time well it wasn't the three points that I wanted but at the very start of our Premier League campaign it was important that we didn't start with a loss so I am very grateful to pick up a point as it finishes here at full time Ipswich 1 Crystal Palace 1 it was an up and down debut for the Croatian Labrovic some really good saves in the first half and then a bit of a shocker to concede early on and I think the 22 year old Pedro Malero is going to take a little bit of time to get used to the pace of the Premier League he was caught out several times especially in the first half but he seemed to gain a little bit more confidence and he grew into the game in the second but the plaudits must go to this man Wolfenden who grabbed his first goal of the season not just a towering figure at the back but a towering figure up front as well an absolute colossus of a performance from a huge towering centre back and long may it continue. I've got to be honest though, it was up front where I think we really struggled. This man, Kiefer Moore, did not play well at all, evidenced by the fact that he only got a 5.3 rating, and the young man, George Hurst, who came on for him, didn't exactly inspire any confidence up front either. And whilst Connor Chaplin didn't exactly have the best game of his career, every single time he did get on the ball, he did look like he was going to make something happen, which makes it even more important that we get the right man up front to try and capitalise on those opportunities. And so one game into the Premier League, and now with £52 million still left in the budget. I think I've got room for one more signing to try and improve this Ipswich Town team. Now, of course, once again, you gave me so many different options to choose from, which I am incredibly grateful for. But obviously, with us being Ipswich Town and with me wanting to keep this career mode as realistic as possible, there is one option that stood out head and shoulders above all the others. He's a man whom, like you suggested earlier, has experience in the Premier League, but has recently been relegated and is ripe for the picking with him wanting to move back to the top flight of English football. He's a man who chipped in with five goals for Burnley last season and at 22 years of age he's a man with a point to prove as he looks to try and show that he has what it takes to compete at the very highest level. That is right, the Swiss international, the former Burnley man, Ziki Amdouni will be joining Ipswich Town to make our third signing of the summer for £13 million and he is someone whom I'm very excited about. He's six foot one, so he still offers us the height that we need in the box but with him being 22 years of age he's got his best years ahead of him. He offers us a little bit more pace than some of our other strikers do and more importantly he offers us versatility not just to play up front but also in that central attacking midfield position in case anything happens like injury to this man Connor Chaplin and once again with me looking to get him on the best training and development plan to get the absolute maximum out of the young man and with him going straight into my starting 11 it's time to see if the young man can offer us something different spark some creativity into my attack as we head over to Nottingham Forest to play our very next game in the Premier League it's away from home for the first time this season and it's a real opportunity for my attacking players to show what they can do for the travelling fans. It's Ipswich, it's Nottingham Forest, and it's on now. And as you can see, there is only one change to my starting eleven that drew that game against Crystal Palace in our opening Premier League game, and that is, of course, Amdouni comes in to make his debut up front and hopefully get his first goal in an Ipswich shirt. Into Morsi. Morsi picks it up and plays it across to Malero. This game, I think, is going to be imperative to our Premier League chances this season as we're going up against a team that are likely going to be fighting relegation along with us here as Longo picks it up oh, I was trying to play a ball out to the left hand side I was just taking a little bit too long there and once again that just goes to show that these Ipswich Town players are not going to get the same level of speed that they got in the championship they're going to have to make quicker decisions as quickly as possible this time though Davis comes across with a good challenge so it's Malera with his first major touch here to try and drive down the right hand side plays it into Hutchinson on the right hand side I'm looking for options in the box here waiting for the run it's a ball in looking for Andumi but just couldn't get on the end of it it's a Langer now to try and drive down this left hand side but Longo with a really good challenge to win the ball back and now Davis the left back to try and bring this one forward this has been a much better start to this game here from Ipswich Town we are in the ascendancy and we look like the more likely to score here as Amdouni has the chance now to bring it onto his right and fire in a strike straight at Hennessy Hutchinson's in though and he's just put it into the side netting that was a huge opportunity to take the lead Chaplin once again picks it up as I said everything has got to go through this young man here as he managed to just turn away from the challenge of the midfield and he's played a lovely ball out to Malera on the right hand side who floated in once again looking for Amdouni who just couldn't get his head on it but that is going to be our key to victory here today it's going to be Wood 
out to Alanga on the left-hand side. Wood gets it back from him, and he's looking for options up ahead of him. Finds Alanga once again. Really good play between the two of them, but Tanzavi with a crunching challenge, and Connor Chaplin once again goes past the defender, and Broadhead tried to play it through. He was too slow, and now Nottingham Forest have the chance to try and see if they can strike a counter-attack here. Morgan Gibbs-White on the turn. Really nicely done. Plays it out to Alanga on the right-hand side. Goes past Davis. Goes past Tanzavi. What a challenge there from the former Manchester United man to keep us in this game. It's Wood now. Back to Zangera. Takes it from distance. What on earth was Labrovic doing? It's really, really poor from the goalkeeper once again. And once again, it's a really soft goal to give away from absolutely nothing. They were about 25 yards out and Sanger just hit it unopposed. And my word, the goalkeeper really should have done better there. Didn't even look like he tried to save it. Nottingham Forest lead 1-0. Davies over to Broadhead on the left-hand side. Broadhead has lost it. It's really not been a good start to this young man's campaign in the Premier League so far this season. He's been really poor in the opening couple of games, but this man, Tanzavi, has been an absolute rock at the back, along with Wolfenden. Amdouni now has come deep to try and collect the ball and get himself involved. Really good play, though. Wins it back and gives it out to Malero on the right-hand side. Malero has options up ahead of him. Lovely ball into Hutchinson. Hutchinson to try and play it back into Connor Chaplin. Really good defending in the end from Yates. Callum hudson Adoy now for Nottingham Forest here at the beginning of the second half. We're going to do exactly what we had to do against Crystal Palace, and that is come from a one goal deficit from behind to try and see if we can fight our way back into this game. That is a lovely ball out to Williams on the right hand side. Davis frantically trying to come across here. Wood. Wood's got the opportunity now to throw it into the box but Williams takes it on. Wolfenden can't get there ahead of the attacker. Oh my word it's another calamity at the back from Labrovic. What on earth is he doing? Well, it was so easy once again for Nottingham Forest to get into my penalty area. But the goalkeeper with such poor defending just basically passed it back into the path of the striker. And Wood is not going to miss from there. It's 2-0 Nottingham Forest. Valero now on the right-hand side. We've got about 20 minutes on the clock here to try and see if we can find a way back into this game. But with Malero running into trouble once again, we are not looking likely to whatsoever. And now we've got a two-goal deficit to make up here. Morgan Gibbs White now into Yates. It's Nottingham Forest who have possession, who have control of this game. And our heads are beginning to drop here. Nottingham Forest looking to try and see if they can add a third here. Wolfenden just about manages to get ahead of the attacker. But has he given away a free kick in the process? Yes, he has. And it looks like Morgan Gibbs White is going to be the man to step up here to take in a really good position. Shooting opportunity. He takes it. It's in off the post and Nottingham Forest have got their third of the game. Well to be fair I can't really blame the goalkeeper for this one. A fabulous free kick from Morgan Gibbs White right over the top and right into the left hand corner of the goal off the post. The keeper could do nothing about it and that is surely game centre match here. It's long go now to try and bring it forward. A consolation goal is all we can really ask for now. Sarmiento into Davis on the left hand side. Really nice build up play here into Longo who took it really nicely. Can he try and lay it off here into Morsey on his right. Morsey to line up a strike from distance. Fires it once again straight at the goalkeeper and Nottingham Forest get it clear. Callum hudson Adoy trying to get away from trouble here as uh, Amdouni really doing well to win the ball back here. Burns now trying to shift away from a couple of challenges and feed it into the striker Amdouni. Amdouni takes it on, fires it with his left, straight against the defender, off for a corner. With a couple of minutes remaining on the clock here, surely this is going to be our last attack of the game. Davis now to try and see if he can float it into the box here. Looking for the big man, Tanzabi. Can't quite find him. It's headed away and that has pretty much been the story of the game so far. Really poor at both ends of the field here. As we go deep into stoppage time, the referee looks at his clock and the referee decides to call time on what has been a really, really tough day at the office for Ipswich Town. Completely outclassed here by a team that is going to be fighting relegation alongside us this season and that does not bode well for our chances. Full time here at finishes Nottingham Forest 3, Ipswich 0. Well, I've got to be honest, after getting a decent result against Crystal Palace, I was heading into this game against Nottingham Forest full of confidence, but unfortunately they have brought us crashing back down to earth. A miserable performance in between the sticks from Labrovic and that is now four goals conceded inside his opening two Premier League games. Amdouni did have a couple of decent touches and he got himself in the box now and again, but he didn't provide us with that forward thrust that I was hoping for. And at the moment, whilst Connor Chaplin is our most creative player, we have to try and see if we can get him on the ball in more dangerous positions if we're going to make anything of this campaign this season. Two games played and we're exactly where you would expect us to be. Rock bottom of the Premier League. And with just over a week remaining in the summer transfer window and with us still having £37 million to spend, I ask you once again, what area of this team do you think I need to improve as I've got to make some changes somewhere? Let me know down below in the comments what you think. But that is going to be that for the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you everyone for your comments, your likes, your subscriptions. I really do appreciate it. Keep them coming and hopefully I'll see you again next time.